Hey friends, welcome to yet another exciting series of our Linux tutorial. Well, we have already covered a lot of topics, so our today's topic is linking and archiving command. These are very important. Okay, so we'll learn it through examples. Okay, the first is linking. What is linking? Uh, there are very occasions. I mean, we come across many occasions where uh, we already have a file in some path and we want it into another path also so just we create a link to it so it's it's not like moving the actual file the actual file remains where it is now you just create a name which is linked to that file and you can access that name it is quite handy linking is generally used for organizing okay so let's go into it first so for linking how how we do it we use ln command ln is used to create soft link and hard link i will tell you what a soft link is and what a hard link is the first is soft link you say ln hyphen s and you name the actual file that you want to create link of and the link name okay so it can be in a different directory and it can be in your current directory or anywhere you want similarly it will create a soft link to it and if you don't use the hyphen s extension it will create and hard link it hard links to it for linking remove you use rm the way you use for removing file or directories okay so let's go into the pra practical session and understand it better okay so we already have a file called abc.txt right let's open it and see what it has it has some content this Sup suppose i want to access it with a different name how would i do it or to a different path i will say ln hyphen s for the soft link the file along with the path and uh, the new name say new name would be the hyphen s with abc okay let's see so it has created a link so this is your link which is directing to the actual file so let's open the link does it behave in a similar fashion yes it does it displayed the same concept okay similarly uh, if you want to create a hard link it's very simple just remove hyphen s extension say h and here you go so you are you have a so, uh, sorry hard link also let's open the hard link okay it's also pointing to the, to the same file okay so what is the difference between a soft link and a hard link well, so, uh, soft link is like an hyperlink. It is actually pointing to the original file. So what it does in Linux, it just copies the path. So if I re remove this file or if I place it in a different folder, so it will it will not point. I mean, you, you will open it and you will not find the file content because uh, now it is pointing to this file, this particular path, and it's not able to find it. So soft link is just a pointing technique like you you have in the hyperlink okay and what is the hard link hard link is actually actually the same is the other name of the same file so even if you remove it or you place it in a different file it does not matter but because it is pointing to the same inode data how we can see that we say ls hyphen l i and you see this is the inode value of your abc.txt and look here the hard link also has the same inode value so the hard link actually points to the inode not to the path so even if you remove or you place it anywhere in the um, move it anywhere in the Linux folder it will still access the inode data and it will always have the same value okay so what Linux does it keeps a track of the multiple names of the same file so hard link is just another name to the file whereas soft link is just pointing to it so if you remove it you delete it it's gone okay so how to remove soft link okay let's see the example of it also I I have removed the file now let's see let's open our soft link you see there's no data 
because the original file does not exist let's open the hard link it still has the data all right so i believe uh, how to remove the hard link you see rm hard link name and smooth similarly how to remove a soft link you say rm link name you say yes and it is gone so i believe the hard link and soft link concept might be clear i will i will take a i will have a, bet, um, a very detailed session of it also um, i will i will try to have a few examples and will show you how actually a soft link and a hard link can be very useful so it's it's a little uh, bigger topic to cover in this uh, basic section so we'll have a video tutorial for the same okay so let's move forward to the other thing that we have okay so zip i think we all are familiar with it zip is generally a utility through which uh, users zip zip your file before transferring it because it reduces the file size so it's easier to carry it in your pen drive or cd drive or if you want to ftp it and zip utility is very much available for windows also so how does it do it you say zip hyphen r you can also have q for silently zipping a file and then you name the final output file and the file which uh, uh, which is to be zipped similarly you just say unzip and the file name zip file name it will unzip it there is another command called bzip2 it is very similar to the zip the only difference is that it gives a much better compression ratio we'll also see that okay but there is one problem with it bzip bzip2 does not act on a folder so first you have to create an archive of it and then you have to use the bzip2 okay in the later section we'll see the tar which can even zip or it can create an archive or it can create uh, you can it can also use the uh, bzip2 compression technique so it's a single thing so we'll concentrate on tar later first see zip and bzip2 for our knowledge okay so let's go to the zip folder Okay, I'm having a sticky hand right now. I don't know why. Okay, so this is the folder. What is the size of it? So I said U hyphen SH for knowing its size in human readable format is 13 m. So I said zip hyphen R recursively Q silently final file name and the file name to be compressed it's silently compressing the file if i have not used q my screen would have been cluttered let us see the output okay and you can see it's 21 amp so it, compression is gone okay so how can i uncompress it you say unzip and you just say this and it will uncompress it here if i do it it will ask for the replacement so i am not doing that and how would I use the bzip2? First, I will create a tar. We'll learn about tar in the later. So you just bear with me right now. You say tar. You say this. And if you, if I can avoid C for compression, F for file, F for so silently it has created a tar file. Okay. If I have used the V, then it would have cluttered my screen. So I just avoided the verbose mode of it. Now I say bzip2 okay and the archive and now it's compressing you see it's more cpu intensive it takes more memory but it gives you much better compression ratio so in in real i use bzip2 more often but i use it along with the tar and tar is a unique thing i mean we'll learn about it so it, it does take more time right so let's see so this is the tarball of it and you say it. it's 14 it's much better compression size so it gives tar is very i um, mean bzip2 is very handy okay so uh, you can un 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 uncompress it using b unzip2 and you say you have the file name 
it will take some time but it will un unzip it okay so it's unzipped right this is how we use now let's move to the tar or tar thing okay okay so now the tar. what is tar well tar is the thing that you will use mainly or most of the time for compressing that we have done with zip or bzip tool or archiving so tar is a single command which will help you in archiving compressing better compressing how we can do it you just say tar z for creating a final zip file c for compressing v for verbose mode f is for the file and then you say the output file name and the input file or folder whatever you want to place it so finally it will create a, a zipped file okay similarly if you want a better compression ratio you use j and same cpf okay you see and um, you know it is very important to have the extension in this format so at least you understand what uh, suppose you have a uh, while decompressing you have a file you should have the extension so you know what extension to be used with the tar for decompressing it so always follow this convention when you are using zipping say you say tzz when you are using with j you say bz2 for decompressing it's very similar uh, if it's zipped format you say zx x for unzipping v for verbose f for file the same if uh, it is bz2 in the last so you just use j in front of it so we'll just see a small practical session okay so let us okay so first uh, let's clear this screen okay and uh, it's here say tar okay and then we I will say CVF for just compressing. I'm not zipping right now. I'm saying tar. I'm I'm just archiving. Okay. I will say this since I've used the verbose mode, it will just scatter my screen. So I will say clear. I say ls, and you see here use your tar file. Okay. Now if I want to compress it also, I will say tar hyphen zcvf i i will not use verbose mode although it flutters my skin screen so i will say tzz right because we are zipping it also and i've just entered it now it's archiving and compressing okay let us see the detail you can see that you can also see that it has a much better compression ratio let us put it in the human readable format it has just archived to it this much but when you say tzz it has given this much of compression ratio okay similarly i mean if i want to comp i can uh, if i want to compress it even better or i want to use bz2 so i will say i will say t tar and then i will say bz2 so that while decompressing compressing i know what what command to use for decompressing it that's why here file name convention becomes very important although in linux we hardly concentrate on file name convention but here it does now you say even tar is taking more time because you know bz2 is very cpu intensive and takes a lot of memory but does it matter to us no we want better compression ratio that's all you see bz2 has still a better compression ratio and on even a larger file it gives you much better compression ratio okay so how to uh, untar it you say for just untarring a file you say x okay i don't want verbose mode so i will not use this i will say uh, let's first remove the file otherwise it will complain all the time and it will say remove so i will it's a folder so i have to remove it recursively i say tar I say Z F and it will untar it. Okay. So you see we have a folder. So I will, I will again remove that folder. Okay. And I will say 
star suppose if i have to uncompress the zip file so i z x f and i will say t z z so it will first decompress it and then it will it will remove uh, it will just open it okay similarly i mean i can use g sorry sorry g f star dot b z two okay and i will enter it it will again decompress and on archive it so this is all that i wanted to cover it's a bit very basic and introductory tutorial for understanding a linking and archiving i will have much detailed session okay friends i i just have a little request to you all if you can uh, also if you like this tutorial and, and if you have gained anything from it so please uh, subscribe to this channel share share your feedback or you can ask questions and you can uh, please also like it if you if you if you really appreciate our work. okay signing off bye